So my name is Nicholas Bolden and I'm the Professor for Materials Theory at the ETH in Zurich. In um, the Materials Theory group, we're interested in the properties of materials, we call them strongly correlated materials, in which the behavior of one of the electrons explicitly influences the behavior of the other electrons in the material, not just in kind of an average, um, average picture. And such materials are interesting because they show many exotic properties, such as unusual superconductivity, sometimes very high temperature superconductivity. They can have transitions between metallic and insulating states. Um, they have unusual magnetic properties often. And they're also potentially useful because one can often tune between these various properties with very small external perturbations such as magnetic fields or electric fields or pressure and this makes them um, desirable in potential new kinds of devices for new information technologies for data storage, data processing and so on. So the way that we approach our research, the way that we go about understanding these exotic materials is by making um, calculations in the, in the computer of the properties of, of how the properties of the material depend on how the atoms are arranged in the solid. And so we, um, in the computer, arrange the atoms in the crystalline form that we're, that we're interested in. We kind of construct the crystal chemistry in the computer and then we solve the equations that describe the behavior of electrons in solids, the Schrodinger equation, and compute the behavior of the material. And this allows us, first of all, to understand experimental observations for materials that are already known, which can be difficult to, um, to explain just from the experiments. In an experiment, you don't have a complete characterization of what's going on, so often you can't extract entirely the underlying cause of a behavior. Whereas in a computer, one has more access to all of the details of, of the material. So we can work with experimentalists to explain experimental observations. And it also allows us to design new materials in advance of their being made with specific properties. So we can test new arrangements of atoms in the computer, calculate their properties, and then propose the most favorable options for experimental exploration. Wow, the important stages of my, my scientific career. So I guess I had a fairly standard scientific career. I did a, a, a bachelor's degree actually in natural sciences with a major in chemistry and a minor in earth sciences in, in Cambridge in England. And then I went to do a, a PhD in Berkeley at University of California, Berkeley in chemistry. And then I, my postdoctoral research I did at Yale University in an applied physics department. And then I guess after that, when I started my independent career, I kind of discovered that what I was actually doing was material science. I kind of came up material science by a slightly roundabout route. And so then um, I moved to the University of California in Santa Barbara, and there I was assistant associate and full professor before moving to the ETH in Zurich. Um, about seven years ago, in 2011. Which of my scientific results am I particularly proud of? I would say that that's always the one that I'm working on at the moment. <laughs> um, I'm not sure proud is the right word, but the one that I'm most excited about is always what we're doing right now. I think everything that we did in the past to, to us is not so interesting anymore because we understand it already. And so the, the new things that, that, we, that we don't understand yet, these are the most, the most exciting, the most fun, fun results and the most fun things to be working on. So 
I'd say I've been very fortunate to have really superb collaborators. For me, um, science is a very um, social endeavor. Um, the breakthroughs that that I've been involved in have all been very much in collaboration with groups with different expertise, and I've been really privileged to work with real experts in um, experimental synthesis and experimental characterization, as well as um, theoreticians with different backgrounds and different expertise than my own. And so this, for me, has been very important. In, in my field, there's in, in materials physics, there's not so much kind of sole author sitting with a pen and paper in a, in a corner. It's a very much a collaborative endeavor, and it's been a real privilege to have really superb collaborators. <laughs>I ever really um, decided. I um, started studying a bachelor's degree and enjoyed it and continued studying with a PhD and then I guess I never really stopped. So it was never really an active decision that I, I didn't, I think when I was growing up I didn't really have a concept, I didn't really know what a professor was. My family is not an academic family and, and I just, um, yeah, started and never really stopped. I think I have no other skills, really, so I couldn't um, have a real job. So that's why I'm still, yeah, still working in the university. <laughs> well, first, I think I have absolutely the best job in the world. I mean, this is really the most... Um, fun, exciting, interesting, challenging, rewarding um, job that anyone, career or job that anyone could have, I think. It's solving problems, working with brilliant young people, teaching, it's really a, f a fantastic career. And so if it's, if it's um, of interest to you, then go for it, because it's really, it's, it's really superb, it's really the most fun. Um, but I'm not sure that this is specific to, to physics or to science or to anything, but to figure out what you're passionate about and what you're interested in and then do that. If you're not, if you're passionate about physics, be a physicist and if you're not, then don't because it's not the, maybe the easiest choice. So it should be something you really, really love doing. So I guess first, of course, one needs all the boring technical stuff, right? Before you can do anything creative, you need to be able to do the mathematics and all the stuff that's been developed before, right? You need this base baseline. So you need some kind of just basic skills in, and tools in scientific technique. And then after that, I think the ability to pose good questions, which maybe comes from a little bit making connections between things that are already known or looking at things from a slightly different direction. So this kind of creativity um, that comes from seeing things in a new light or connecting new things, new things together. And um, this is something I, 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 str I try to teach my, my students and my junior collaborators. It's very hard, I think, to, to teach people to de develop this or to know where it comes from, but I think the people to who, who I see who I find whose work I find most interesting are those that are making unusual connections or approaching problems from a different angle and then they can really make make breakthroughs, I think.